down. So we did that already, sorry. <laughs> Bend over to that same side. Breathe into your side body, soften the jaw. And then allow this to take you all the way forward. Hands extend forward and fold in. So now we're getting into the hips. You're feeling your hips unlocking. You're feeling if there's any tension there. Soften the jaw. Good, and slowly root the sit bones down, ground your back to come all the way up and inhale again, reaching the arms up. Bending the other elbow, pressing the head back, feeling the opening of the chest, breath into the sternum. So we're coming into opening triceps, shoulders, Allow the other hand to slide down and again, press the head back. Notice how this maybe helps you to find a bit more depth. And then bend over to the side, feel space, root the opposite sitting bone. And then bend all the way forward. And don't worry if the other leg is, well, it doesn't matter which leg is in front really because we're stretching both hips. It's quite symmetrical, this shape. Couple of breaths. Unwinding through the hips. Good. One last exhale where you soften, allow gravity to have you. And then plug the sit bones down, round your back, and roll up one vertebra at a time. Good, let's make our way onto our hands and knees. So knees underneath the hips and hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes, inhale, open the chest into cow stretch. And exhale, round your back as you sit in the child's pose with the toes stacked. So feel the toe massage here as you stretch them. And then come forward with a rounded back. Inhale as you open the chest again. So this flowing cut and cow that we do. And exhale, hips towards the heels, round back. For a moment, relax the head to the ground. And then we keep going, inhale. Forward press, round your back, chest opens, breath in, and exhale, hips back, rounding. Good. One more inhale, forward, rounded. Exhale back. Now run forward again, inhale. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the knees, press it back down, dog. Let's keep flowing. High up into the toes, inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, press back down, dog. Imagine your spine being this wave and you're just really adding more movement, more fluidity to the spine with every breath. A combined breath and movement here, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Couple more, inhale forward. And exhale back, the slower you go, the harder. And try to really guide the movement with your core. Inhale, it's as if the breath ripples through you. And exhale back, down dog. And from here, we're going to come forward to plank again, breath in. Bend the knees, send the, the heels to the right, sitting bones to the right, so it's a side downward dog. And then keep bending as the left hand now comes off the floor, sweeping the floor, and then up and over. 
So you're in a plank, a side plank, good. And then again, sweep it down, bend the knees generously, and sweep it up and over. One more, exhale. Inhale. Stay here in side plank, feel the opening. Place the left hand behind your head, press the head back. Good, and slowly allow it to come down. Take an inhale here. Exhale, knees down, Anahata Asana. Two breaths, inhaling, feeling the chest floating up slightly. And exhale, feel the chest sinking down. One more, inhale. Exhale, softening the chest. So the, hip, the sitting bones back towards your heels, allow the hands to slide back, roll your spine. So you're coming into Vajrasana, bring the hands behind you. Inhale, open the chest up towards the sky. Really find space here. Puff up the chest. And exhale, hands down, tuck the toes, downward facing. Inhale, forward to plank, roll, exhale, hips to the left, heels to the left, feel so much the stretch that the right hand kind of comes off the floor because of this um, sinking, it can't stay there anymore, and then sweep it from the back, up and over, breath in, and exhale, bend, strong legs, Strong obliques on the left side. Inhale, up and over. And exhale. One more. Breath in. Breath out. Good. Right arm up and over. Inhale. Exhale. Bring it behind the head. Press the head back. Feel space in the shoulders and chest, and I know the other arm is shaking probably. And slowly bring it down. Breath in, regular plank. Exhale, knees down, anahata. One full breath, softening the chest, maybe the chin down or the forehead. Still quite early in class, so be mindful of your body. We open progressively. And then as you sink and send the sitting bones back towards your heels, you're rounding. Hands behind you. Puff up the chest. Inhale. Stay for the exhale. One more. Send the chest up, breath in. And exhale, hands forward. Tuck the toes downward dog. Let's bring the right leg up to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, knee to the nose, round and touch. Slow movement. Don't shoot the leg back. Inhale. Resist. Use your glute. That's good. Exhale, knee to nose. One more. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, hold. And step it forward. Release the left knee down. Inhale, open up the chest, look forward. Exhale, glide back, half splits. Twice more with breath. Inhale, open up. And exhale, glide back. One more. So we're massaging the body open. We're not doing any excess for now. We're just feeling, exhale back. Good, on your next inhale, come forward again, reach the arms up, open the chest. Eleni. Ne? In this asana, our hips are up, so it's like that or like that? They're up. Up, yes. So over the knee, hips over the knee. Take one more breath in, Anjaneyasana. 
good grace, really drag the mat towards you as much as you can so your pelvis comes lower. Good. Slowly, hands down. Lift the back knee, step it back, plank. Exhale, knees down, anahata. We're just using the same vinyasa as a little change. I will offer chaturanga options later. And then sitting bones back to the heels, but as something different, because sometimes we do the same thing again and again, which is great, but why not change it up? So you can either stay here or press the legs to come off your heels. Or maybe you do this later, it doesn't have to happen now. Then hips down, hands forward, toes tuck, down dog. Left leg rises, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Twice more, inhale. Knee to nose, exhale. One more. Feel the breath moving you. Exhale, step it, hold rather, hold, hold, hold. And then step. So you're stepping with mindfulness here. Breath in as we look forward, open the chest. Exhale, gliding back, Arahanman. Twice more, breathing in. Breathing up. One more. Feel the right quadricep lengthening. Space in the pelvis being created. Exhale back. Next time we'll come forward, Anjani Asana, lifting the arms. Hold. Engage the inner thighs. Drag them up towards you and then lift up through the chest, crown of the head. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step it back, plank. Inhale. Exhale, knees down, anahata. One breath in. Exhale, sending the chest down, soften. Hips towards your heels, round the back, hands behind you. Inhale, either here or press. One full breath, use your legs, glutes. And exhale, hips down, downward facing. Okay, we're going to walk forward to the top of the mat. You can jump if you wish to. Let's take a half lift, breathe in. Fold with the exhale. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to heart. One full breath in standing. Just noticing the connection with the earth through the feet. And we'll come into just a couple rounds of Chandra Namaskar. We're still close to full moon. So we're going to bow to the moon. It was so amazing here in London, by the way. So let's inhale, arms up. Chest to sky. And exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Find so much smoothness, smoothness between the movements. Left leg back, knee down. Inhale, opening in Chandra. Exhale, hands down, step it back, plank, inhale. Knees, chest, chin this time, exhale. Into a cobra, inhale, shoulders back. Exhale, downward dog. Left leg forward, right knee down, breath in, arms up, reach. Find a half moon shape. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Breath in, inhale as you reach up. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more inhale. Exhale, slowly fold. Right leg back, inhale, arms up. 
Exhale to the ground. Left leg back, breath in. Knees, chest and chin. Inhale into a little cobra or big, up to you. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold it out. Inhale, come up, reach and lengthen. Exhale, hands to heart. Stay and breathe. Just noticing if the heartbeat has started going slightly faster. And then let's release the hands by our sides. Keep the legs fit with, uh, hip width apart. Inhale, open into Utkatasana. Let's flow it out, chest to thighs as you exhale, hands back. Couple more. Inhale, slow. Exhale, so your breath is at least four counts. So you need to move through those four counts. Inhale. Exhale. Good, as you come up, lift the left leg with you. Whoops. Good. Press it forward, extend, bring the hands forward. Hold. Draw the navel in. Send it back. We're gonna go slow. Bring the hands behind, interlace them through third warrior. Good. Look down, gaze at one point. And slowly release the hands. Mindfully, left foot back. Release the knee down. So you end up back in Anjani Asana. Inhale, chest opens, look up. Exhale, Ardha Hanuman. So just finding some movements from before. One more breath. Shift it forward into a high lunge, but keep the hands down. Let's pulsate here three times. So as we inhale, we engage the inner thighs, round our back. Exhale, heel back, knee forward, open chest. Two more, inhale. Exhale. One more, and you can exhale from the mouth when you feel there's excess tension gathering. Exhale. Hands down, step it back to plank, inhale. So two choices for vinyasa. If you really want your chaturanga and upward dog, go for it. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep going with knees down and anahata. And then drawing the hips back, hands behind, and pressing into a mini camel. And then making our way back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. So I'm just offering two vinyasa options for you to choose. One is the classic one. It can be a cobra or upward dog, or the one that we introduced today as something different. So staying downward dog, And just a couple of breaths, pressing through the shoulder blades. So you're really in downward dog, not just using your shoulders and your neck and your arms, but actually you're pushing even from your lungs, imagine. Okay, let's bring the feet together, reach the right leg up to sky. And exhale, step it forward again. Same movement, inhale in Anjani Asana. Exhale, this time hands down, Parjvottanasana. Couple of breaths, draw the right hip crease back, 
So pyramid pose, the right leg is straight. If this is very um, wide stance for you, feel free to bring the foot a little bit uh, in. It doesn't matter which one. Good, and now bend the right leg back in crescent. Let's bend the right elbow. So what we did at the beginning, bending right elbow and allowing the left hand to slide down for now. Press the head back. And just feeling the opening here. Two more breaths. Good. Slowly come forward and then transition to your side. So bend the left leg, open the arms wide. In a high skandasana. So you want your head to be same height as your tailbone. Good, and then make your way forward again. Bring the left hand down. We're just taking into a twist, right arm up. If your legs are tired, the left knee can be down. And you can wrap the right arm behind you and open the chest even more. One more breath. Good, slowly bring the right hand down. We're gonna shift into standing splits. Left leg up to sky. Try to keep the hips square for this one. So the leg will go less high, but it's okay. Neck relaxed, face relaxed. If you want to play with balance, you can bring your hands, one or both, into the right ankle. Breathe. Good, release the hands down, take a half lift. Inhale, exhale, release the left foot down. Good, shift a little bit from one leg to the other. Take a half lift, inhale, and exhale, folding. Inhale to come up. Reaching up with the arms. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Taking a moment just to noticing, reflecting, feeling how is this impacting my body, my mind how I feel, how do I feel? How do I feel right now? Now lift the hands, let's come back to chair, inhale. Exhale, chest to thighs. So you know I really love working on legs in the morning flow. Again, inhale. And exhale, slow, 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 resist. One more, inhale. Exhale, enjoy. Come up, bring the right knee with you. Press forward, extend the arms. The toes can be pointed or flexed, doesn't matter how high they go. In fact, I should really take it lower and <laughs> send the right leg back. Good. You're a three interlace, second interlace. Don't worry if you lose balance. Square hips. The hands can rest onto your bote <laughs> or they can press even more back, depending on how your neck feels. Good, release the hands. Let's take it back. Gently, right knee comes down, don't crush it. Good, Anjani Asana, inhale. Exhale, hands to earth. 
Ardha Hanuman. Breath. Shift it forward, crescent, um, but with the hands down, so a high lunge. Three pulsations with our whole body. Let's reverse the breath. So we'll inhale here, and with the exhale, we round, engage the inner thighs, round, 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 coil in. Two more. Inhale, open, open, open. Exhale, navel to spine. One more. The legs really work on this one. If you don't feel anything, you need to feel the resistance more. Inhale, open. Send it back into plank. Breath in here. Choose a vinyasa. I'm going to go with the one from today. So a moment in anathata. Or you can do both. There's enough time. I'm coming into the pregnant woman's vinyasa. So if you're <laughs> joining me, it's actually a really nice vinyasa. And then it can be even more high as you come in strasana. And then taking it back to Adho Mukha. Just two breaths. And don't make your down dog rigid, make it super flowy and dynamic. So it's just an experience rather than hanging out there waiting. You're recalibrating. Let's bring the feet together, left leg reaches high, breath in. Exhale slowly forward into Anjani Asana, inhale. Exhale, Parsvottanasana, back knee lifts, hold over the left leg. Breath. One more. Bend the left leg, coming up into crescent. Bend the left arm, right hand on left elbow. Pressing the head back, and then slide the right hand towards the right hand towards the left hand, and open the chest. Good, nice. If you're wondering what am I looking down here, I'm looking at you. I have the iPad so that I can see you better. Now come forward and shift to your side. If you're coming in a high skandhasana, opening the arms wide. Good. Just a couple breaths, very strong inner thighs. Good, and then turn back to the front of the mat, right hand down, left hand to sky. Wrap it around your waist, open the shoulders, soften the neck, allow the head to hang. As if you're creating a nice stretch between the tip of the shoulder and the crown of the head. So this tight muscle softens. Good, and then bring the left hand down again. Standing splits, hands to the ground, shift. And you can play with balance. So either one hand into the ankle or both. Engage your belly. Don't worry, if it's tricky to balance, you can stay with hands down. Good, last full breath. In your last exhale, relax your neck and your head and your face. Good, half lift, breathe in. Exhale, right foot by the left. Let's take on a for a moment, open the feet wide. 
Sink the hips down. Hands in prayer position. Feel the breath. Feel the grounding sensation. Good and slowly bring the hands down. Fold forward. Keep the legs wider so you're kind of in a short padottanasana and folding. So the feet are wider than the mat, off the mat. Yeah, take a halfway lift. Heel to the feet close to one another again, but keep them hip width. And as you inhale, come all the way up, reach up with the arms. Good, and exhale, hands to the heart center. Pause and reflect. How does it feel like now? And maybe even touch the palms of the hands into the heart. And connect back to this pulse of life, the spanda. Really, this is what the flow, this is what the vinyasa is all about. How can we be in this flow, in this vinyasa, to tap? into that spanda, not only in our heart and our breath, but in our whole life, in the, all the cycles. Releasing the hands. Okay, so let's move into a, um, an open hip wave now. So we're going to inhale in Utkatasana again. We're kind of coming the same way as we did before. Bring the left knee with you. Good, and then send it forward first. Left foot forward, and then send it back. Bend the right leg, but this time we're gonna open the hip. So right hand down, and you turn into Ardha Chandrasana. You might need a block. And keep the right knee bent as you turn the hip so that you don't clip your hip. And then once you get into Ardha Chandrasana, then you extend the right leg. Good, extend the left arm up if you have it. If you have a left arm. <laughs> Good, bend the right leg slowly. Make it into Vira 2. Straighten the right leg for a moment. Reach forward. Right hand to shin, left arm up. Bring the um, hand behind you. Press behind your head and press the head back. Good. Hold just another two breaths. Good. And from here, extend the left arm up again. Bend the right leg again. Vira two. We're going to bring the hands into Gomukhasana. So before we had this way, you can still do that. Or left arm behind. Gomukhasana arms. Breathing, pressing the head back gently. And let's imagine as if we're reversing the warrior so we feel the right side opening. And maybe gaze up. Last full breath. Release the arms, come up and come all the way to ground. 
Turn into Parsvottanasana. So hands frame the right foot and you're folding over the right leg again. Good, from here, we'll take a half lift, plant the hands down, and send the right leg back, bend the knee, open up the hip, step it back behind you for a wild thing. Open chest to sky. Good, and slowly gather through the core, right hand down, knee to navel. Going to fall in triangle, last bit here, extend, left arm up. Nice, everyone. Your right foot is quite high up, it's not so close to your left. So you're in a triangular shape. Left hand down, right leg up, inhale. Either move through a vinyasa with the right leg hovering if you're coming into Chaturanga, or knees down, anahata, there's a truck going outside my window. Hence the sound. And if you are in anahata, then plugging your sitting bones towards your heels. And we'll take a deeper ushtrasana. You can join us even if you've done a regular vinyasa. Left hand to the heel. Right arm to sky, opening the chest. You can hold your head if you're like, I don't know what to do with my head. Should I drop it or should I keep it back? You can hold it with your hand or extend. And then coming up and switching sides. And slowly sit onto your heels. Just one breath. Hands forward, tuck the toes, lie back. Two breaths. Okay, so reaching the right leg out to the sky slowly. Bring it forward. We're simply going to step into an open hip standing split, so we're not going to complicate this too much. Shift forward, but this time open your hip, and maybe you could even catch your foot with your right hand. So left hand, left foot, right hand and offering your quad a stretch. Right hand, left foot. And maybe the balance isn't there and it's fine. Maybe you're having both hands down and only the left knee is going to the sky. Good, take a last breath here. And release the left foot next to the right, half lift, breath in, exhale, Uttanasana, inhale all the way up, hands to heart, how does it feel now, just reflecting, pausing, going through the waves and coming out the other side, and let's take it to the other side, into our last chair. Pressing the left leg to bring the right leg. Press it forward. You can have the hands forward or keep them up. And send the leg back. Let's take it super slowly into Ardha Chandra. So bend the left leg. So you're in a kind of a bended leg warrior three and then place the hand down and then open the hip so that your hip doesn't click and then you can extend the knee if you have that right arm up good and you can have a block for 
height and space. One more full breath. You could even play with lifting both, um, sorry, the lower hand off the floor if you have progressed in Ardha Chandra. And then bend the left leg. Touch the right foot back, second warrior. Just briefly extend the left leg. Triangle pose, reach. Maybe hand on a block or on your shin. Right arm up. Keep, bring the right hand behind your head, press the head back. So this is so nice for chest and shoulder opening. Last full breath. Right arm comes back up. Make your way into second warrior. Left arm up, right arm back. Plus, Gomukhasana. Gently press the head back. And let's reverse the action as if it's reverse warrior. Or your left side opening. Good. Release, come up. Bring both hands down, squaring of the hips. Parsvottanasana, folding over left leg. So we're gonna shift to three-legged dog. You can play around with trying to keep the left leg straight, but you need to really gather through the core. Press the hands, send it back. Good. Bend the knee, open up the hip, transition to wild thing. Take your time, enjoy. Open. Good, and slowly into fallen triangle, left hand down, knee to navel, cross it over the other side, right arm up. Right hand to floor, left leg to sky, inhale. Move through your vinyasa. So if we're coming into the same one, knees down, anahata asana. And then to ustrasana, you can join us in ustrasana. Maybe this time both hands come either say onto the sacrum or onto your heels. The toes can be tucked or untucked. Keep the chin in, don't drop the neck back. Good. And slowly come back. Sit, breathe. Softening the face before we come into our final dynamic movement. So bringing the hands forward, back to Adomuka. Reach the left leg up, step it through, simply, and shift into a standing split, right leg to sky, bend the knee, catch, and open. And again, if you're working with balance, 
take your crumb on, maybe it's not with the hand clasping. Okay, now instead of coming up, we're going to tuck the right knee in and come all the way down. And let's come into Gomukhasana. So left knee over the right. And the right arm up. So just repeating the same arms helps us to basically practice this again and again and again. Maybe you find a class. If this is too intense, you could just loosen this um, wrapping of the legs. It's like a shoelace. Pressing the head back gently. Nice, everyone. Now let's release our arms, bring them forward and fold in any amount. If you're like, no way, you can stay here. And just allowing your body to feel more comfortable in its shape. Otherwise, hands forward and finding some folding. This is a great, great shape for our intestines, especially now that it's the morning. It gives a very good kind of like massage, so stimulates the nerves and helps peristalsis. So very important to keep the bowels happy. Softening into the sensation around the hips. It can be quite intense in the outer hips. Three more breaths. Your hands can really help you here if you're kind of feeling that your sitting bones are coming off the floor with your hands, you can encourage them to come back. Last breath. Good. Come up as you breathe in. Let's release that for a moment. So just straighten your legs, shake them a little bit. And we'll come to the other side straight away. So the other knee on top. If you need more shaking, go for it. Left arm comes up, right arm comes back. Maybe this side or this side feels easier or maybe more tricky, depending on your shoulder mobility. Try to keep the collarbones broad, like they're smiling. Feel the touch, your very own touch of your hand at the back of your heart. Gently presses back. Breathing softly and mindfully, especially to the areas that you feel they're sticky and tricky. Just soften and send the breath. Release the hands and come forward any amount.
You could even just stay up. So going to your depth, where you are today, and these areas can be very intense. They can bring up a lot of emotion. We can feel very frustrated with our body. So how can we take a step back to somewhere where we don't become agitated, honor that this is where we are today and just breathe. So that maybe we find some freedom into this area. Last three breaths, wherever you are. Eyes closed, maybe. Or just keep a half gaze, this gaze that it's what we call the Ananda gaze, the bliss gaze. Where you're just not being so stimulated by your visual stimuli, stimuli, stimulus, I'm not sure. <laughs> Good, and slowly, the last exhale just allows you to sink in, and then you come up as you're breathing. Okay, and releasing, let's open wide into Pavishta Konasana legs. We'll take a lateral stretch, um, not a side bend, so turn towards one leg and folding. So manage how wide your legs are so that it doesn't feel extreme. Good. And you can have your hands by your legs to really manage what's happening there. Good. Now notice what happens when you soften the jaw. What happens when you soften your expectations? What happens when you offer yourself maybe that prop or maybe that little adjustments or um, modification. Good. Last breath. The last exhale is just this uh, into the shape where you release and then come up. Moving to the other side straight away. If you need to, you can have a prop underneath your sitting bones so that it helps you um, come a bit more high. So you kind of surpass, for some of us, our pelvis um, hinges a little bit forward. Good. Eyes closed or half gaze. Soft face, soft jaw. And I insist on that. I think I say it about a hundred times in each class. But our tension really reflects there. So we can really tell if we're tense by our expression in our, in our face. And also many of us hold tension in our neck and shoulders. So we're just trying to retrain ourselves, our body-mind connection. And it works. It really does, I have to tell you. Two more. 
Feel the weight of the breath moving you into the shape rather than the intellect. And the last exhale is just a breath out into the shape where you settle and then come up. Okay, let's come into the middle now. We're not gonna hold for more than five breaths. So just walking the hands forward, or maybe you just stay here, just to open up through the inner thighs. Good. So as long as you feel a lengthening sensation in the inner thighs, then that's all what we're doing. You could, Marina, you could have a little elevation under your hip, your sitting bones. Next time. It could be a low, yes, maybe if the block is too much, try it out for now. But maybe like a pillow um, would be better. Yeah. Good. And let's press to come up. Okay. Use your hands to bring the legs together. Let's make our way onto our backs. So round all the way down and back. You know, I can't roll, but you can take your time to roll down. And as we come here, feet on the ground. Let's take just for a moment an inversion of your choice. So I like the simple, super simple inversion of just extending my legs up to the sky and my hands like the dead bag situation or the bag that just turned upside down, but it's alive. And you could take a shoulder stand if that's something you enjoy. If you take shoulder stand, make sure you always gaze upwards. So whatever your choice, really the aim here is to drain the blood from the extremities back towards the heart for purification. If there's a shape that you really wanted to practice today and I haven't offered, you can practice that. It could be if you would like to go into a headstand, for example, now it's a good time. Or if you wanted to come into a full wheel shape, that's also a good time, being mindful of your lower back. So just a couple of minutes of self-practice. If you are in the upside, um, upside down back, then bring the feet into a happy baby. If you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana, if you're in a back bend, stay, enjoy as long as you want. And you could repeat a second round as well. Take a little rest. If you are in happy baby, Let's come into a twist. So bring the knees together, legs together, shift your pelvis to the right and drop your knees to the left. Or it doesn't matter which way anyway. Open the arms wide. Good, Marina, take a happy baby. You can press the lower back. Good. If you're in the twist, really soften in through the shape. Good, and let's switch sides, knees to chest, and bring them to the other side. Softening and releasing. Good. 
Good, and slowly come back to center and extend into your Shavasana. So completely, completely relaxed. Nothing is tense, nothing is engaged. Palms face the sky or maybe the palms are offering a little Reiki to yourself. So maybe you can place them in an area of your body that you feel it needs some tenderness, some love, some healing. Any external things that are going on, we can just go on. But your inner state is really this. Soft, calm, rejuvenated self. There's a sense of balance, equilibrium. A sense of deeper connection to the self with the big S. We're just enjoying the pause, the undoing. Last few moments, just stay present. And gently start deepening your breath. Just bringing back the inhale that makes us more kind of like active. And gently bring the arms up overhead, stretch it out. And turn over one side. Take your time to come into a seated position. Let's bring the hands onto the heart. Let's chant three ohms together and it can be a simple mm, 
So like a humming sound. It's good for our nervous system. So breath in. the sense from the vibration even if you're just visualizing that you're vibrating and you can always practice this even in your shower just to hum it's really good so let's bring palms together bow the head in towards the heart thanking ourselves for being in this collective circle even if it's virtual it's so potent of energy and i'm so grateful for all of you thank you so much for joining and I'm going to unmute you.